Hey everybody, happy Sunday. This is Vaughn. Hope you've had a blessed day so far this morning. Hope you was able to go to church and uh, worship the Lord. But if not, we're bringing church to you today, okay? God gave me an awesome passage and uh, I kind of related to us going on the streets Friday night. I had a Ananias experience. I saw a conversion and a a road to Damascus experience where a man was going on uh, one direction and God caught him and opened his eyes and turned him around and he and he decided to go back home and it was glorious and wonderful. We got to pray with him and, and he was what I call a big fish out there. But we're in Acts 9 verse 1 and it's it says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings, and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way whether they were men or women he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem so Saul was threatening the church and he thought he was walking the right direction didn't he and he journeyed and as he journeyed he came near Damascus and suddenly, can everybody remember the suddenly in their lives? I had a suddenly in my life where God opened my eyes. And God had a suddenly here for Saul. He thought he was doing right. It says, and suddenly there shined round, round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Sometimes the direction we're going and what we're doing is persecuting Jesus. And we don't even realize it, do we? We're hurting our Savior. And Jesus is trying to open our eyes and wake us up to the truth. And he's the way, the truth, and the life, right? And, and the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And that's all God's asking us to ask him, what will we, what will we have you to do, Jesus, in our life? Here we are. We surrender. We surrender. We're astonished that you would suddenly appear to us and open our eyes, right? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. We went to the city of Parkersburg Friday night, and God showed us what to do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither, neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And as I was reading this today, I've read this passage so many times, and I've always thought about Paul, Saul being knocked off his high horse. Right, I never really put myself in the place of Ananias until Friday night. I had an Ananias experience with this precious, precious guy. And um, I saw God turn him around. It was amazing. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight. And I preached that night on the straight gate and the narrow way. And inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth and has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. Oh, Jesus wants us to receive our spiritual sight, right? He wants our eyes to be open to the spiritual things of God. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to the saints, thy saints at Jerusalem. And there he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, 
for he is a chosen vessel unto me. And I believe this man Friday night is a chosen vessel unto God. I believe God's going to use him mightily. Amen. And he said, a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house. And putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me. We were sent Friday night for Jesus. It was just amazing. That thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. And he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. Amen. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. God wants us to strengthen our brothers and sisters out there. Amen. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples, which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue that he is the son of God. He found out he had a revelation of Jesus. He, he was the son of God. And he said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? Amen. It only takes just the light of God to open our eyes. Amen. And he chooses us to carry his light, his love and his life to all that he puts in our path because he wants people to turn from their wicked ways, just like he turned us around. And he wants to use us as, as his chosen vessels to preach the gospel. Our prayer today is, oh, Father God, we have heard of Saul's road to Damascus experience. But may we have an Ananias experience. It was so glorious being a part of that Friday. May we see your miracle working hands. May we witness your suddenlies in people's lives. May we be a, a test to the conversion of another by the power of the Holy Spirit. We're just midwives out there and we get the joy of seeing these babies born. Spiritual babies I'm talking about. Oh, what a glorious experience it is to see you manifest in someone's life to change their mindset, their attitude, amen, their direction and their understanding of who you really are and what you can do in their life. It is truly meat to eat that we know not of. It is truly precious heavenly fruit. It is truly an encounter with the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the King of kings and the Lord of lords named Jesus Christ. What a privilege, what an honor, what an opportunity to have an Ananias experience. And I hope and pray someday maybe you can go on a crusade with us and have that Ananias experience. And if not, just be sensitive to the Holy Spirit at work or at school or at the marketplace or wherever you may be at a restaurant. And that, that God will put a person in your path that you can lead to the Lord and see what God's going to do in their life and turn them around in a new direction, a new hope, a new life. In Proverbs 16, 25, it says, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death, right? We want to help them get on the right track. Jeremiah 21, 8 says, And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. We want to introduce them to the way of life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, isn't he? Matthew 7, 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way. Saul was on the broad way and he thought he was on the narrow way, didn't he? Until that suddenly happened. He said, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in there. There's so many to reach for Jesus. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. We want to help those few find it, right? We want to do whatever it takes to introduce them to Jesus. Deuteronomy 3.23 And I besought the Lord that at that time, saying, O Lord God, 
thou has begun to show thy servant thy greatness in thy mighty hand. We saw God's greatness out there Friday in his mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or in earth that can do according to thy works and according to thy might. I pray thee, let me go over and see the good land. We want to go over and see God's works right in his mighty hand that is beyond Jordan, that goodly mountain in Lebanon. Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to compared, to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. It, it's, it, it's a sacrifice. It's, it's, a, it, it's, it's a hard thing sometimes to get out on the streets. There's a fight. There's a war. But it's so worth this when God reveals his glory. Like we saw Friday night in this gentleman, it was amazing. And in a lot of others too that night. It says, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Saul was not yet a son of God, but he became Paul when that suddenly happened. And he had that glorious experience with Jesus. And he became a son of God. Like we all have that opportunity. We have the power to become the sons of God. It says in John, right? And it and for the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. We got to see some children born Friday night. In 2 Corinthians, we're almost done here. 517, I share this a lot, but it's so wonderful. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new and all things are of God. It's God who does it in us and through us, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. He was reconciling Saul on the road to Damascus through Jesus Christ to himself and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That's our ministry to reconcile others to God. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Amen. Not imputing their trespasses unto them and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus makes us righteous. His blood took all of our sin, transgressions, and iniquity. He's washed us clean. If we accept him as our Lord and Savior and ask him to forgive us of our sins and we turn from the road we were walking and let him turn us around and walk on that straight and narrow road through that straight gate, which is Jesus Christ. He's the door. He's the way, the truth, and the life. The last scripture today is 1 Corinthians 2 9 but as it is written i has not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for them that love him it was so glorious to see what god did in this man's life and in all the ones we touched friday night amen those are the things the kingdom of heaven on earth the kingdom of god the people getting saved, healed, delivered, set free. Devils getting cast out. Amen. The lame walking, the, the blind seeing, the dumb speaking, the deaf hearing. And most of all, their spiritual eyes being open to who Jesus really is. 
I hope this encouraged you today. Amen. To just be sensitive, to, to want to get in the game and be used by God. Amen. To be a midwife for him, to be in it. Ananias and have that Ananias experience with others as they are become born again and saved and take on a new direction, a new life. Love you all so much. Lord willing, we'll do this again tomorrow. Okay. God bless you. Have a blessed rest of your Sunday and I pray you have a blessed week. Amen. As my brother would say, K-L-U-J-I-C-S. Keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. God bless y'all. Bye-bye.